Welcome to Sportswire's Summer Review here at Douglas Freeman High School. I'm Will Catterley. Behind me, girls volleyball team ramping up, getting ready for the regular season. One thing that happened last season, guys basketball coach Larry Parpert retired as a living legacy after 500 wins, 40 years of coaching, and in his final season, he had one heck of a basketball team too, amassing 19 wins on the air. And of course, no season is complete for Douglas Freeman without a home win against their heated rival, Mills Godwin. So we go to Douglas Freeman, and yeah, it's senior night. Godwin faithful in the stands, as is Freeman dressed in the camo on the right. Godwin going with the whiteout theme. Fans are great in this contest whenever they play, and despite what the record may be, Godwin had it going early and often. Number three, Scott McDonough had 12 on the night. So did this guy, Michael Cogashell from deep. He hits the three, Godwin with the early advantage. They won the first matchup at home, looking to sweep the regular season series at the home of the Rebels. But Michael Pappas and Douglas Freeman have other ideas. Still in the first quarter, you saw the three ball there. Then some transition defense. And that's Corey O'Shea. You'll hear more from Corey O'Shea later in the program, maybe even in this game. Godwin was getting everything they wanted. Trayvon Booker from way deep. And Freeman in the first matchup, they did not shoot the ball well. This game, they didn't have a problem shooting the basketball. Michael Fortune for three, 13 points on the night for Fortune. Still though, Godwin getting what they want as well. Again, it's Kagashell. 28-21 at the half. Godwin in good shape up seven. Pappas trying to change things. That three ball cuts it to four. Michael. Fortune and Pappas. There's Fortune. He hits the three. Michael Fortune and Gray Pappas doing the dirty work. Pappas from way downtown. He hits a three. At one point, Freeman was down 12 points. They go back to back to back threes. And then again from the corner pocket. Count it. Gray Pappas, 20 points on the night. Brings Freeman from down 12 to up by one after three quarters of play. Yeah, they were down 12 in the third. Godwin says, we'll have none of that, thank you very much. Bradley Thomason from deep. But then, big play. Freeman down, but not out. The bucket up and in. Freeman back on top. Gray Pappas for two. Again of his 20. Later, up by three is Freeman. The short elbow J. Got it. Nothing but nylon for Tyshawn, Action Jackson. Godwin and Freeman deadlocked at 48. 5.2 seconds to play. Freeman with the last chance. Fortune! Does it shine on Freeman? No, the putback, yes, but it was after the buzzer sounded. So, tied at 48. We're going to overtime. Free basketball. More free highlights. The bucket again by Pappas. The overtime was dominated by Douglas Freeman as they seized old Uncle Mo momentum to take control. Douglas Freeman going to finish the regular season at 19-3, get the number three seed in the upcoming playoffs. 59-52 is your final. The Rebels earned the number three seed in the regional tournament, and Parpet's team would go up against his former pupil, Henrico coach Vance Harmon and the Warriors. Now, Harmon, coach of Henrico, used to play for Douglas Freeman as the pupil of coach Larry Parpert. Meanwhile, the Rebel coach was going for win number 501 to survive in advance. And there he is, coach of the year, Larry Parpert taking his Freeman squad at home in a 3-6 matchup against the former Freeman Rebel himself, now Warrior head coach Vance Harmon, couple of state championships himself. We picked things up in the third quarter. Henrico down double digits, but not for long. Number four getting in on the action. Muhammad Kamis for three and then steal and score it. Jame Estead, who had 15 points in the game. Henrico coming back, but Freeman was blistering from beyond the arc. This inside for number 10, Michael Fortune. He led all scores with 20 points. First half, they could not miss a three. Gray Pappas. Knocks that one down as well. Nine three-pointers on the evening for Freeman. Pappas had 12. Henrico, though, they're not done. Stop, pop, nice passing. Finally, the open man hits the three ball. 
Nice job by Tamon Jones, but the Rebels seem to have answers in the third. Again, the long ball, count it! It is good for three, Fortune. Again, three of his 20 points. Rebels up 14 over Henrico. Fourth quarter though, things start to turn around as the Warriors start to make a run. Ought, double ought, zero. Isaiah Race, Reese for three, and then off the rebound. Reverse layup is good. Freeman has to call timeout, and all of a sudden, Estet and Henrico back in this thing. Down single digits now. Take it to the rack. Count it. And the foul. Number 24 getting it done. Mr. House. Jaden House with 16. Warriors. Off the miss. House again. He's got two. And before you know it, it's a five-point game with 3.09 to go. Henrico would cut it to three, but then Gray Pappas, great job beating the press, and Freeman hangs on as their fans celebrate, and the Rebels will move on to the semifinal round as they eliminate Henrico, 60-51, to your final. The Rebels would fall in the state semifinals to eventual state champion, Verina. Well, when it comes to spring sports, there was no denying the talent of one Lauren Bruns in girls soccer. She scored 36 goals on the season and more importantly, thwarted her greatest opponent. Up first though for Freeman, if they were to advance in the regional playoffs, they would have to get past Prince George. So who would the Wildcats play in the finals? Already up one nil, should be two. It's probably gonna be Freeman they play in the finals. So spoiler alert right there. Taking on Prince George. Prince George got an upset. There's a seven seed that all made it all the way into the semifinals. That, my friends, is a foul. And she gets a yellow card to boot. It would lead to this free kick. You do not want to give Lauren Bronze opportunities to free kicks. Off the deflection, into the net, they score. Would make it a 2 0 lead for Douglas Freeman. There'd be more where that came from. Beautiful ball, and Bronze knows how to finish. Easy squeezy, lemon peasy, and the Freeman Lady Rebels were scoring in bunches. You want more offense? You got it. Bruns, somebody's got a marker. She scores. Lauren Bruns. Leading the way for Freeman like she does so often. Be four to nothing at the half. Second half, switching sides. More Douglas Freeman. Check out the through ball here. Goes into the net. That's actually a shot. She shoots. She scores. Yeah, more than just Bruns can score, by the way. Number 21, Shannon Galt gets one to go. And then off the corner, they're good at set pieces as well. Beautiful header. Finds it back in the net, she shoots, she scores, it's Sam Fee. And Freeman all over Prince George. Still not done on the highlight reel. That one's blocked, but number nine is there. Ashley Hemp puts it in the net. The biscuit is in the basket and Freeman advances. Nine nil is your final. And that's about the best Freeman could play against Prince George, but to advance, they'd have to play even better when they'd match up with Deep Run. They lost to them in the regional finals, but by winning in the regional semis, they made it to states where they'd run into Deep Run again in the state semifinals. Here's the problem. They lost them in the regional finals. They lost them in the regular season. They didn't even score a goal against Deep Run. So it seemed pretty unlikely that Freeman would come out on top. Fortunately for Freeman, Bruns brought it. And so did the rest of the Rebels. To play, guess who? Douglas Freeman, who they beat all year long. Lady Wildcats unbeaten, and Freeman lost to them, but it was only one nil, a chance early. They only lost one nil in the regional final. Chance early for deep run, you saw that one just go high. Wildcats controlled tempo almost throughout. That shot, oh my goodness! Sometimes you just gotta let one fire, and it works! Wildcats on the board. Fortune smiles on deep run. They have a one nil lead in the first half. Second half, same score, deep run. Looking for more. The pass in the middle. She's got an open look. Oh my goodness, the keeper makes a gigantic save for Douglas Freeman. Enough to save the season. 
then. Lauren Bronze on the penalty. Puts it in like only Lauren Bruns can do, it seems. Tying it up at one. We got a brand new ball game, folks. Still tied at one. Second half. Under eight to play now. Lauren Bruns! Are you kidding me? She does it again. Bruns puts Freeman up 2-1. And for all the scoring ability that Bruns has shown all year for Douglas Freeman, Maybe we should start looking at her defensively because check it out. Deep run, a chance to get the equalizer. Keepers out of the way. Bronze gets the deflection. Wildcats still have a chance though. Oh, and the shot goes awry, but Bronze made the save as the keeper. And Freeman pulls off an improbable upset, ending Deep Run's unbelievable season and winning this one, beating Deep Run for the first time all year when it matters most in the state semis. Two to one is your final. The Lady Rebels lost the state title game, but obviously they had one heck of a season. Freeman Baseball had their moments as well as they were playoff bound once again. We hit the diamond straight ahead. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. I adopted Bento from a shelter. A lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Welcome back to Sportswire Summer Review here at Freeman High School where the Rebels boys volleyball team had not made states in a couple of years and they were looking to buck that trend in a regional semifinal matchup against Lee Davis. A regional playoff volleyball, anyone? Deep run the three seed, taking on Lee Davis the two seed. We're tied at 20 in the first set. Not any longer, Max Thompson with the ace. Freeman has a lead later on still in the first set. First one of three wins, remember. These games being played at Atlee. Lee Davis gonna get it over. Up 23-22 though. Hit them where they are not. Chris Gilliam with a point. Come on, let's go, he says. And then finishing things off. What a block by Number 11, Peter Hughes. Freeman wins the first set, 25-22. Lee Davis, tough customer again. Be in the two seed in these playoffs. And Freeman was taken to a five set final against a six seed, L.C. Bird. But this guy, number seven, Joe O'Connor, was a huge difference, especially in the second set and moving forward. One more O'Connor, you got him. He's got every arsenal. The hard kill shot, the little touch shot, that works for the kill. And then again, Lee Davis on the serve. We got more O'Connor. Boom, shakalaka, he gets the kill to go. O'Connor on fire, so is Freeman. Still second set. Lee Davis, no! O'Connor, yes, yeah, he's got the skills for the block too. I just put together a resume tape for you, buddy. 25-17. After two sets, two sets to none, Freeman looking to advance to regionals for the first time since 2011. That point goes to Lee Davis. Freeman asked Coach Calvert, what was it about that 11 team that was so special? He said, well, they just played hard and they played together and they played as a team and they played with energy. Freeman did all those things on this night. That's good and yeah, they got their smile on. Chris Gilliam was huge. 11 kills, 12 digs in this one. Joe O'Connor. Fantastic as well. He had 12 kills to go along with a couple of blocks. There's one of the 12 kills right there. Let's go. Freeman looking for the three set sweep. And they're gonna get it done with the block. Freeman Rebels advance to states and win in straight sets. I don't really know. Every time, every time the coach looks at me, Calvin always says OT baby for over top. So I just OT baby. It feels pretty good. I've been in this program for five years, and this is the only year that we've made it all the way, so this is it. 
Meanwhile, Freeman was great on the diamond as well, and they were at their best when Camden Lazar was on the mound. He was at his best on the road at Mills Godwin. And time for the latest installment of this great rivalry. Freeman Rebels looking for a marquee win on the road. No score in the second inning. Sometimes it's how the ball bounces, right? Michael Fortune has good fortune. Here in the top of the second, that's a base hit later. Runner on third. It's an RBI single by Alec Erickson. He plays Fortune off of pitcher Michael Kagashell, and it's 1-0. Freeman, bottom two, is it a balk? I don't know, let you decide. It's a pickoff play, runner on first, not anymore. Freeman Rebels defense was paramount in this one. They get the out there, next inning. Rebels looking for more, seeing eye single by Liam Simpson. He gets on and the Rebels did a good job with base runners. Miss on the bunt, it's a strike. Runner going to second, that goes into the outfield. Another run comes home, and Andrew Bland, the freshman, scores. It's two to nothing. Freeman, and then Uncle Charlie, strike three with the curveball. Goblin would limit the damage. Nice strikeout by Kagashell. Two to nothing, the score. Bottom three. The story for Freeman, pitcher Camden Lazar. The strikeout, victimizing Nora, Noah Cornwell. Freeman, can they add to their lead? Well, how about this? Top four. What a play in left. Great catch by Mark Busson. He snags that one for the out. More Camden Lazar low in the strike zone. He really had everything working, he said afterwards. He said a lot of interesting stuff afterwards, but God would have their chances. Fifth inning, the walk, two men aboard. It would lead to this. High drive, deep to center, but that one doesn't have the distance. Liam Deegan flies out to end the inning, and Lazar gets out of trouble. Shutout still intact. And then, ooh, ha, the heater. Freezing the Rebel pitchers. Number 10 in the pitch now, Alex Leverty. Check out the gun by the catcher. Great job, a little tap on the head, and Godwin is out of danger. Next chance for the Eagles. Go to the six, gets a strike out there. Now we go to the six, that was the fifth, two runners were on. Sixth inning, that's high ball four as Liam Deegan works a walk. Two runners on for Goblin in the fifth, two runners on for Goblin here in the sixth. What would happen? Well, I said defense was paramount, check out right field. What a catch if you could see it. He makes the final out of the inning. Still, shutout intact. More importantly, a 2-0 lead for the Rebels intact. Well, let's go to the seven. Runners on first and second with two out. Now it's second and third on the pass ball. Two outs in the inning. What does Lazar do? He gets the comebacker from Mark Busson. Throws to first, and the Rebels get the complete game shutout and the win at Godwin. 2-0 is your fun. It feels amazing. I mean, we all came together. We did our part. We uh, we had gumption, and that's my favorite word of Freeman Rebel is gumption, and we had that tonight. This is the biggest rivalry. When I think of this, I think of Yankees and Red Sox, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. It's the biggest rivalry, and come out on top, it's the sweetest candy. Strong with the force he is. No, seriously, though, great game, but is Freeman the evil empire of the Red Sox, or are they the Jedi or the Sith? Rebel season would come to an end against upstart deep run in the regional semifinals. Still one heck of a season for Freeman baseball. And, you know, no matter how great baseball was or how tremendous the girls' soccer team was and the great year that Freeman guys' hoops had, perhaps there was no greater collection of talent than in Freeman gymnastics, where they had one heck of a senior night. To Freeman High School we go for gymnastics, and what a team this has been throughout the years. Three of them were first team all metro selections in the very first year of the all metro team. Um, this is probably the most decorated group of gymnasts that has ever gone through Freeman. Coach Kelly saying at best this might be one of the best teams that Freeman has ever had. Might be the best, mainly because of a big three. Mallory Gervin seen here on the vault. Big time numbers 8.85, third place overall. Another reason Cam Shears. Cameron Shears! Little hop step on the 
landing, but degree of difficulty, 8.9. And Lacey Fisher, also on the vault. Check it out. Again, amazing jump, amazing vault. 8.95 to lead all gymnasts in the event. They are so deep and talented, especially the three of Hayes, Gervin, Shears. But right here, Lacey Fisher once again. She's come on strong too. That was her on the beam. And Lacey Fisher, 8.7, really strong, but it doesn't even crack the top three for Freeman because we're going back to Cameron Shears here. Don't try this at home. Oh my goodness. Cam Shears with an 9.6 on the beam. How about the bars? It's one of my favorite events to shoot because just the immense power and control these ladies have to have. Just check it out. More shears for you. Perfect. Almost perfect. It's hard to get a score like this. Judges don't do it. 9.05. When you're scoring over nine on the uneven bars, you are doing something right. Aaron Hayes, also on the bars here. She really got it going. Number one overall. Check it out. And a perfect landing to boot. 9.15. First place overall, Shears, Gervin, and McCarty, all, all arounds in this. Freeman wins senior night. Cameron Shears won back-to-back -back Gymnast of the Year honors, and her teammates, Aaron Hayes and Mallory Gervin, joined her on the first team All-Metro team. Well, gymnastics was not the only sport where Freeman had a lot of terrific individuals. Caleb Jacoby won his weight class of 182, taking home the regional title, winning by pin, and advancing to states. Carter Bristow was tremendous in swimming. She won four regional events, including the 200 freestyle scene here. She posted personal bests in two of the regional events. Joe O'Connor was great in two sports. First in boys volleyball seen earlier, Joe was a key part of the Rebels' run to states. He also won regionals for his high marks in pole vault. And Emmy Levinson was dominant for Freeman in girls tennis. She won the regional singles title last season. And of course, the fall regular season kicks off soon, and that means football. Freeman Rebels getting ready behind me in a scrimmage right now with Hopewell on the field. And they return to regular season action August 24th at Midlothian. And then the following week unveil their brand new football field. Should be fun. I'm excited for fall football. Well, remember, if you have any questions or comments about this show or any other, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter. I can't wait to see you next time on Sportswire.